If the achievements of SpaceX's Starship are measured by its test flights, OFT-1, OFT-2, OFT-3, Flight 4, Flight 5, Flight 6, and soon Flight 7, then what people talk about regarding Blue Origin's new orbital rocket program, New Glenn, is the years of delays. One year, two years, three years, and by the end of 2024, it will mark four years with the rocket still grounded. However, Jeff Bezos's company refuses to accept this outcome. They remain confident and have boldly declared that New Glenn might still launch in 2024. Blue Origin's payload for New Glenn's first mission, NG-1, is ready for launch this year. Interestingly, SpaceX's Starship Flight 7 is also likely to take place during the remaining weeks of December. This timing seems to reflect a determined effort by Blue Origin to keep pace with SpaceX, setting a firm target for its engineers to match. But will they be able to achieve this goal? As of the third week of December, in stark contrast to the ongoing activities and progress of SpaceX's Starship program at Starbase, Blue Origin's new Glenn remains stationary, with no testing conducted on the two stack stages. To explain this delay, Dave Lemp, CEO of Blue Origin, stated that the testing requires FAA approval and they are waiting for those approvals, while we wait for regulatory approvals for hot fire and launch. From my understanding, once Blue Origin secures this permit, they could both conduct the static fire test and proceed directly to launch. If you think about it, this process seems more straightforward compared to SpaceX, which has to apply for permits for each individual Starship launch, right? What do you think about this? Share your thoughts in the comments below. But is Blue Origin overly confident about a launch at the end of 2024, especially considering they previously had to postpone what was supposed to be the first mission for New Glenn and an important launch for NASA? Initially, the plan was to launch NASA's escapade mission in October, but as the date approached, the space agency blinked and decided to delay the mission until 2025. At that time, Blue Origin stated they supported NASA's decision and announced they'd reschedule the second flight of New Glenn, originally planned for December to November. However, Blue Origin has yet to launch any New Glenn rocket, let alone a second one. This delay seems to have been anticipated as during a talk at AGU-24, Rob Lillis mentioned that the Escapade mission is now exploring launch opportunities for next year in 2026 for the twin small sets, which were initially set to launch in October aboard the first New Glenn. These opportunities would align with an arrival at Mars in 2027. Therefore, the launch schedule recently revealed by Blue Origin appears to be unreliable. And on top of that, the progress Blue Origin's made with New Glenn is far from convincing to suggest that they have a fully flight-ready rocket. Even the timeline for conducting a static fire test for the rocket seems unrealistic. For example, SpaceX's Starship demonstrates exceptionally fast turnaround with the shortest gap between a static fire test and official flight being about 15 days. This allows sufficient time to address and resolve any issues that might arise during the testing phase, ensuring the rocket's ready for a successful launch. Of course, this timeline is even more critical for a brand new rocket like New Glenn. Millions of things can go wrong during a maiden launch, and even a single issue could result in the loss of the vehicle. For a rocket as big and complex as New Glenn that integrates numerous new components and software, there's a high likelihood of encountering latent issues that may only become apparent during the actual flight. Moreover, Blue Origin needs to launch its New Glenn rocket to determine the vehicle's performance margins. Sources indicate that the current version of New Glenn has a payload capacity closer to 25 tons, lower than the advertised 45 tons. This discrepancy is not uncommon for new launch vehicles, and the company will need to use real-world performance data to refine the rocket's hardware and software for future flights. However, such improvements can only be made after launch once the necessary data has been collected and analyzed. Another challenge is Blue Origin's goal of achieving partial reusability with New Glenn. The company plans to attempt recovery of the rocket's first stage during its inaugural flight, a bold move with a substantial risk. Even if successful, New Glenn will still face fierce competition in the highly competitive launch market, particularly from SpaceX. SpaceX has been a pioneer in partial reusability for over a decade, setting a high standard that Blue Origin will need to meet to stay competitive. Is partial reusability too little or too late for Blue Origin and other startup space companies? That question's not easy to answer, as we currently have only two practical examples of successful first-stage rocket reusability, SpaceX and Rocket Lab. While SpaceX focuses on reducing costs for customers, Rocket Lab emphasizes increasing the launch frequency of its electron rocket through reusability. When executed well, first-stage reusability can reduce the cost of launching satellites in the orbit. SpaceX's success has clearly demonstrated this. 
Additionally, reusability can enhance rocket reliability. NASA on multiple occasions has expressed a preference for flight-proven boosters over entirely new ones. SpaceX has leveraged this strategy effectively using its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets across various phases of their life cycle, from the high-risk initial flights to stable commercial operators during mid-life to maximize benefits. However, SpaceX appears to be looking beyond Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Company execs, including but not limited to Elon Musk, have repeatedly emphasized that they are preparing to transition from their current rocket lines to focus entirely on Starship. According to SpaceX's vision, Starship is not just the next step, but a vehicle that will enable space transport at low cost with superior reliability. Recently, SpaceX's president, Gwen Shotwell, shared their goal of launching Starship up to 400 times in the next four years, an ambitious number that reflects SpaceX's determination to dominate the space industry. After all, if Starship achieves the success SpaceX envisions, does that mean the industry's goals have been redefined by the pioneering company itself? Worst-case scenario for the industry is that as Starship starts winning contracts, satellite manufacturers may flock to it due to lower costs, even if they don't need the full capacity that Starship offers. This scenario unfortunately presents challenges for competitors like Blue Origin, ULA, and Relativity Space. Many of their rockets, whether still in development or ready for launch, might find themselves at a disadvantage against a fully reusable vehicle like Starship. More critically, many of these companies are directing their efforts towards competing with Falcon 9, a rocket that's proven highly effective but only offers partial reusability in the first stage. The greatest cost associated with operating Falcon 9 for SpaceX comes from the second stage, which cannot currently be reused. In contrast, Starship is designed to fundamentally change the landscape by making both stages fully reusable. This shift could leave competitors struggling to keep up if they don't find innovative solutions. A more viable scenario might be that smaller companies like Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, and Relativity Space will need to carve out niche markets focused on specialized launch contracts. However, even in such a scenario, SpaceX will likely dominate the launch market with the cost advantages of more affordable rockets. This trend is reminiscent of what we saw just a few years ago with the rise of small satellite launch providers. A flurry of new companies emerged, capitalizing on relatively low-cost investment capital, but many dreams of launching CubeSats daily never materialized, and several of these companies had to shut down. The rapidly changing space industry continues to push the boundaries further, but it also raises an important question. Can a new entrant into the commercial launch market with a partial reusability strategy like Blue Origin survive against a giant like SpaceX? Is Blue Origin poised to become the next SpaceX? With its ambitious goals of securing government contracts through Blue Moon Lunar Lander, offering LEO commercial flights with New Shepard, and planning to provide space station services via Orbital Reef, Blue Origin positions itself as a promising alternative for government and commercial partnerships. However, it falls short of being a true rival to SpaceX. Despite its potential, Blue Origin remains the closest contender to SpaceX, though the gap between the two is significant. While there's always room for change, SpaceX's current dominance makes such a shift unlikely in the near future. Similar to how tech companies in the early 2000s tried to emulate Apple's success, SpaceX and Apple share a unique quality. They set the trends. SpaceX isn't focused on competing with the rockets of Blue Origin or others. Its mission transcends rivalry. It's about taking humanity to Mars and revolutionizing a stagnant industry that's been slow to innovate. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.